in order to embrace a fully kind of liberal critical culture, like a thriving, healthy culture, yeah. basically everything has to be potentially mockable. And like yeah. in the 90s, you know, I'm Gen X. And like, I think we really had that. It was like a culture in which everyone, including oneself, was up for mockery. Yes. Like all the time. And this was actually a much more beautiful and playful way of being together. Yeah. And dealing with the difficulties that we all suffer, you know, and the fact that everyone makes mistakes, everyone's an idiot, you yeah. know, like the, to Too laugh right. at oneself, you know. And I think we, if, if we have a culture in which certain groups are off limits and they're not allowed to be laughed at or they can't laugh at themselves, yeah. you know, this is like a recipe for disaster and it, it kind of divides people terribly, you know. So I do wonder about this, about whether, I mean, I've spoken to a number of comedians mostly actually yeah. who say exactly what you're saying, that, you know, they're nervous about, uh, you know, mentioning certain topics because so often people misunderstand the subject of the joke for the target of the joke. Yeah. And there's a kind of weird kind of literal mindedness when it comes to interpretation of art. And, you know, if you're calling out a filmmaker because of a depiction of, say, uh, violence against women, which happened with Tarantino's film The Hateful Eight, people saying well, that, you know, they, they're very violent towards the Daisy Domague character. But all of the characters uh, receive are at the receiving end of violence. The male characters are like... It's, it's, it's a very odd, I think... Or another example would be the Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the Tarantino film, where people were saying, well, uh, the character, Sharon Tate's character, doesn't speak very much. But that was an artistic choice. It turned her into, it made her more iconic. That was what was interesting about it. So how do we get to the position where people aren't, or critics in particular, aren't just, and audience members, aren't just thinking ideologically, aren't just thinking, to what extent does this artwork accord with my view of the world or the fashionable view of the world? How do we change that? I think part of it is this general cultural fear. I mean, when people are in a psychological state of fear, their response is kind of very immediate and feels very urgent. And a lot mm. of the kind of responses we see, we often describe as knee-jerk. Yeah. You know, and, and it's common, like, I don't know, um, finding out woke errors is kind of like a trick. It's like, yeah. once you've learnt the language, you can spot. And you get rewards. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, and then people start to internalise that and, you know, then the sadistic people get more points and... Yeah. You know, because they're more sociopathic and other people are just like, oh no, what if I, what if I get, say the wrong thing and do the wrong thing and then yeah. I might lose my job. And What a turnaround though. So if you go back to the sort of the, uh, the 90s playwrights yeah. like Mark Ravenhill and, and yeah. Sarah Kane who delighted in really upsetting people, Absolutely. offending people, pushing people and that was lauded mm -hmm. by the media and including the left-wing media who are now very uptight about this mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, but it's such a rapid change. That's right. And I think it's, you know, we used to associate transgression with the left, you know, whether it's to do with sexual liberation or kind of uh, really pushing the boundaries to do with religion. You know, everything was up for criticism and yeah. attack. And that kind of transgression and playfulness then moved to the right, we could say, mm -hmm. um, or at least a certain image of the right that was online with memes and the kind of Trump campaign and all of the images of Pepe. And the left got very, very scared. So the pendulum kind of swung yeah. where transgression and playfulness went, basically. And that the fear started to kind of really kick in I think yes. and you know so now it's this kind of very uptight very sort of immediate sort of terrified response yeah. and there's no joy in it that's the other thing a culture has to have a sort of like um, delight and gleefulness and a kind of relation to beauty and the possibility of beauty and that's another thing I think there's a kind of fear of beauty or like even a war on beauty Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.